Hey guys, um, coming to you live again. This is Trevor from Peak Potential Physiotherapy and Wellness here in Carrierville, Tennessee. I wanted to come and discuss a little bit about your psoas. And uh, I think my, my title went up there, but basically it's said, it's written P-S-O-A-S -S, and it's pronounced so as and most people are probably wondering, so what? What about it? Um, so we had a blog uh, written earlier this week by, uh, by my wife, um, who's also a physical therapist here, uh, called Uncover Your Hidden Psoas Muscle for Hip and Back Relief. I feel that the psoas, and I wanna just give you a a little breakdown of the article, there's some great tips in that, and I will link to that below. But what we're gonna be doing is telling you what the psoas is, uh, what can happen, um, why it can happen, and, and then next week, our uh, blog in conjunction with this is gonna give you some tips that you can do with it. There's also in the blog itself a link to our, our free tips report, which you can get about back pain and it will um, give you some things that you can do uh, to help with um, some back pain that possibly could be coming from your psoas. So uh, another term, and that psoas is basically the anatomical term for one of your hip flexors. There's uh, three or four muscle groups that actually do hip flexion, and that's bringing your, bringing your knee up. So doing this is hip flexion, and that's what the psoas does. So again, I am Trevor. I'm with Peak Potential Physiotherapy and Wellness. I'm one of the physical therapists and owners. Hey, Carol, um, here at Peak Potential in Carrierville. And I just wanna discuss a little bit about what the psoas muscle is and what it does and why it can actually do that. So just to tell you a little bit about the psoas itself. Um, it is one of the big muscles of our body and it attaches from the spine to the hip. This is a big stabilizer of the spine and it's something that can cause a lot of, a lot of pain. So I'm gonna go through kind of what it is, um, where it is and why it causes some of the pain we have. Uh, if you have questions, please leave them in the comments or you can, uh, you can email us directly from our website at www.peakpotentialpt.com and we can start a conversation that way or you can come on the chat like uh, Carol did and always ask a question that way. So the psoas uh, muscle itself is located in your pelvis. Um, so I'll try to get away so I don't get out of the picture. So it's in the pelvis and it's attached from the back of the spine to the front of the spine and attaches to your hip. What it does, it performs hip flexion, which is your knee coming forward or your leg coming forward with walking and those sorts of things. So it's located behind all the organs, all the, the stuff in front, your intestines, those types of things, and you can't see it or you can't like try to turn it on and see it in the mirror. So it's often forgotten when we're stretching, but you've heard the term hip flexor. Your hip flexor tendon is actually your psoas muscle and what's called your iliac, iliacus muscle, which come together. So because it's not thought of a lot, it's not stretched a lot. <clears throat> These muscles work to, sorry, there's a, a gnat in my way. Uh, so what these muscles are supposed to do is pull the thigh or the trunk toward one another. So it also does the crunching motion that way. And when it's tight or weak, what you can do is experience problems like back, pelvis, hip, even knee pain. And when it's healthy, it stabilizes the back and helps maintain proper posture and move the legs. Unfortunately, because of the way we sit, all day long. Most of you are probably viewing this as you're sitting. What that does, it shortens. So when it shortens, that becomes a problem. Any muscle that is too short or too long cannot optimally contract and be strong. So we want to mitigate 
a short muscle or strengthen and decrease the tension on a long muscle. A strong muscle, the strong psoas muscle allows you for healthy posture, uh, freedom from back pain, those sorts of things, also optimal for any kind of performance that you're doing. But due to our chronic postures, we create trigger points. And that's a terminology that's thrown around a lot is trigger points. And what those are are tight bands within a muscle that have decided to shorten to protect you or because you've had pain or you've gotten in a poor posture and those are trying to tell your body to do something. We talked about pain. I think it was last week I, I went into pain and got on my soapbox about that. Is it okay to hurt type thing? So you can go back and listen to that one if, if you'd like. So if the muscle is tired or tight and is causing pain and weakness, then the whole lower body can be affected. So what causes a tight psoas muscle? I'm sure you're wondering, right? So what causes a tight psoas muscle is weak core muscles. And that might be something else I need to go into. People always ask me about core. And so giving you, uh, telling you why uh, it's important to have good core muscles. But, um, but having a weak core or even weak glutes or buttock muscles can cause a tight psoas or hip flexor. Also chronic sitting or slumping, which we probably are all are right now. That, that's what I'm doing. Prolonged cycling or marching motions. So if you're doing those types of things for exercise or in a marching band, those types of things, you can get a chronic tightened psoas. Weak pelvic floors or after pregnancy. Sleeping in a kind of fetal position all curled up. Uh, even though it feels nice when you're doing it, it can shorten those muscles. And just bad posture in general. Uh, what are some problems, what are some symptoms that cause a tight psoas? And it's limitations or decreased motion in your hip. There are uh, it's pain across your hip and groin area. So people might say they think they have groin pain or even hip pain and it could be from a tight psoas muscle. Lower back pain, pelvic floor pain. You could also get this with chronic digestive issues or even constipation. You can have difficulty breathing when you have when you have a tight psoas, and the pain can also refer down the leg to the knee, and it's and then it's relieved when sitting because when you sit it's shortened and you don't feel it anymore, and also when you sit the core muscles don't want to work either. So a quick story about a patient that I had who it was a previous patient I had treated for a problem on one side and he came back with pain on the other side. He thought it was the same thing before it was a pelvic alignment issue and uh, sacroiliac joint issue. This time, pain still in the same area, but it was the piriformis, which I think we've talked about, and there is a video about what the piriformis is and why it does what it does. But then I started looking around because just things weren't getting better as quickly as we wanted to. And what I did was start palpating or feeling around on his stomach, and we found that his psoas on that side that he was getting pain was really, really tight and really tender too. So I, we kind of pushed on his stomach, was able to feel it, and he lifted his leg and turned it on and wow, <laughs> it hurt him. So after releasing that and teaching how to stretch, he got up and there was no pain in his leg anymore. So what we thought was some lower back issues were actually coming from his psoas. So we treated him, gave him some stretches that he could do, and he could get rid of his pain for about 10, 15 minutes. But the pain came back. But he also has a poor posture and sits a lot at work. So those are some other things that we have to change now. We have to change the environmental to prevent the muscle from getting tight and chronically tight. So those are other things that we're working on in subsequent sessions after calming down the pain. So what you'll also see in the blog next week is some uh, ways you can treat the psoas as well. So tightness of, of that muscle can also cause other problems, and people might not even think about this, but uh, chronic tightness of it can cause a forward pelvic tilt, or what you even could think of as a beer belly or pot belly, 
So it would tilt the pelvis forward and make you feel like you have uh, a little bit of a lordotic or, uh, or shortened <clears throat> lordotic curve or a curve in your back. It could also cause you to have hamstring strains if that's irritated, knee pain or tendonitis, uh, nerve impingement in the hip, sway back appearance like we talked about, that's that pot-bellied feeling, or increased risk for, for injury in your disc because you're, you're just putting yourself in a bad posture. So all those things and how do you treat the psoas? So muscles and joints all need to be worked and you have to figure out how to be able to mitigate the shortness of that muscle of the psoas. So through a physical therapy assessment, you can figure that, that out if it's tight. You can also just do hip flexor, try to do a hip flexor stretch, which is usually in that runner stretch or lunge position but being able to stretch that would be a way that you could do that. And I think we'll go into a little bit more of that next week. I just wanted to give you all the why this week on um, why the psoas is actually doing that because it attaches to so many different things uh, that that's why it can cause all of these issues. So the chronic lower back pain, the posture position, the pain in the groin, the pain down the leg, the pain in the knee, it can actually all be coming from one muscle, your psoas, or even the hip flexor complex. But the psoas is, is one of the biggest ones. So many things can be done at home, and we'll just tell you to stay tuned for that next week, and I will be going over a little bit of that next week on Thursday should be on Thursday but you can always contact us through leaving your chat below and I'll be linking to the blog so you can go to that now a lot of people there is some controversy around the psoas when um, when Amanda uh, was doing her research on on the blog that there is people who had very not bad thoughts about the psoas, but it's a large spectrum about what people feel about, that you can't touch it, that you can't release it. From personal experience, I have a tight one on my right side, and yes, you can touch it, and no, it doesn't feel good, but yes, it feels good afterwards. Being a person who has treated it before and has had really good success with it, it can be treated. There are also um, people who feel that you're in a bad position, like you could hurt something because you're near the organs and the intestines and those sorts of things. But if you find a trained manual therapist who's been doing it and this isn't something new to them, I don't think you'll have any problem uh, when, when you're getting it treated. So I am Trevor with Peak Potential Physiotherapy and Wellness and we're talking about the psoas. And so what? Um, so the psoas needs to be treated and being taken into account if you have any of this type of back pain, uh, hip pain, groin pain, knee pain, and it all needs to be assessed correctly in order to see if that's one of the muscles that needs to be treated. But it is very easily treated. So if you have questions, please leave a comment. Um, again, we are Peak Potential Physiotherapy and Wellness here in Collierville, Tennessee. Get on our website if you have any questions. Uh, we've been in the Carterville area for about a year and a half and been practicing as physical therapists here for over 10 years. So please let us know if we can help you. It was great, great getting to be with you again. Thank you.